Hello, welcome to another episode of Thy Truth. Before you say or ask, will you marry me? Or before you respond with, oh yes, I will. When it comes to a committed relationship, there are certain questions that are important to ask. As they say, what you do not know, it can hurt you. Now, sometimes we're, we are shy or we want to shy away from these kind of questions or we're scared to ask the very difficult questions. We're scared that they might just up and leave or we're worried that the difficult question might hurt them or we don't know how to ask those questions. We don't know what to ask or we, you know, we're ignorant about it, whatever it is. Granted, you can ask 101 questions. Yeah, they might help you know, understand if you're compatible, but sometimes it might not exactly help. You might not know the person completely, but it's still important to know certain things. If you don't deal with an issue before getting into a committed relationship, you'll deal with them while you are in the committed relationship. So before the committed relationship, why not ask these questions? Why not know these things? Why not understand better how your partner works in certain situations, right? Okay. Because if you don't deal with them before, you're going to deal with them while in the relationship. And before you know it, it's a horrible roller coaster of disappointments. Time for some honest questions, I would say awkwardly honest questions that you might want to ask your partner. Number one, talk about your past. As much as it is important to accept that your partner has a past, you agree that they had a life before they met you, it's important to know if the experiences they had in your past relationship would affect your relationship negatively or if it will impact your relationship positively. You want to know, I mean, the people sometimes that are, it affects their relationship negatively because they're still stuck or attached to their ex. And you see them constantly comparing you to these people. Maybe they don't do that verbally, but in their heads or in their minds, they just compare you unfavorably with them maybe because they had more experience with them or whatever the reason. That is something you should or want to know. You should know. Or sometimes it might have a positive impact because the past relationship, they look at what they have and they see that what they experienced wasn't as great as what they have now. So it makes them appreciate what they have with you. So you see what I mean? So you need to know if it's going to affect it positively or negatively. So the question you should ask is, will our involvement or our relationships with our exes help or assist us as a couple or would it obstruct us? Number two, talk about the importance of intimacy to you. I can't stress how important this conversation is. And I think I've talked about this before. This question in particular is very important because we expect certain things from our partners without talking about it. Someone told me, I I don't like the way he kisses me, but I pretend to enjoy it to make him happy. Hmm. I always say, if, if you don't talk about it before it gets serious, just know that it's been accepted. If you don't like the way he, he does it, and then you get into a committed relationship, he's already accepted that, you know, what I was doing, I was doing a great job. So now she's complaining. Why? Because you didn't complain before. You said you liked it. Now you don't? Come on. So sometimes we get shy to express to our partners what we truly want, how we want it. Some of us are looking to experience different things through being intimate, you know, someone to to experience pleasure in in different ways. So it's important that if you feel like if you want to be held a certain way, you want this or that, I think it's important to talk about it from the start. Tell your partner how important intimacy is to you. Number three, another very important question you should ask your partner is, do you know how to love me? Hmm. Do you know how to love me? It is important because the strength of a committed relationship is understanding the various love expressions. You need to know the I love languages. In fact, I'm going to talk more about this in another episode. This is so, so important. Okay, I'm going to pause here, but 
know that you should ask this. You should know their love language. Very important. Number four, I've heard someone say, I met her, I met her at the market and uh, I just saw her and we just clicked. Clicked a clicked. <laughs> okay. And I just knew she was my wife. All right. Clicking. Hmm. Clicking is good. I, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, it, it might be good, but a committed relationship is deeper than just clicking, than just, you know, you clicking. Yes, clicking means you just vibe, you just meet each other, and you just know you have this instant feeling, strong connection, whatever it is. You feel like the person gets you instantly. I get that. It's fine. A committed relationship is deeper than just clicking. You need to ask them, what is it about me you like, right? What do you like about me? What do you find attractive about me? What do you admire about me? In fact, what are your pet peeves? There are certain pet peeves that would put you off. I get irritated about certain things, and I'm sure everyone has everyone has their pet peeves. All right, some people don't like you chewing your your fingernails, some don't like you chewing loud, some don't like you talking when you're watching a movie, some don't like you interrupting them, some don't like it when you're always late or you stare at their phones, they don't like you looking at your phones. Or you know, People have different pet peeves that just get them, they find it irritating. So you should know these things. What are their pet peeves? What are, it's more than just clicking, okay? Get to know them in detail, deeper rather. Okay. Next question, number five. Are we in the same page in terms of finance? This is also very important as well when it comes to financial issues. You can tailor it to fit or you can frame it around your personal financial fears. You can tailor the questions around your financial wants and your financial goals and your cautions and all of that. So it can be tailored around around that, but it's a question that needs to be asked. Moving on to number six, how are we going to handle wahala in our relationship? How are we going to handle problems in the relationship, disagreements? Fight mode, discuss mode, or flight mode? Now, when it comes to fight mode, meaning if there's a disagreement, are we going to break the bottle, break plates, scatter the house, and, you know, fight? Or is it a situation where you discuss, a discuss mode? We talk about it. Yes, it might get it a little bit intense, but we're talking about it. We're understanding each other. We're expressing ourselves. Or flight mode, just disappear, run away. You can't deal with a situation. This is a mode that I always find myself most times. Um, but this mode is Actually, when it comes to these modes, I I won't just specify on the flight mode. I think it depends on our family dynamics. Our family dynamics can shape us. Imagine a household where when they communicate, their voices are always high. Like coming to the house, because I've been to a household like that, and it's like a war zone. It's not, no one is fighting. No one is quarreling. There's no problem. But the way they communicate, it's almost like someone is, someone had a fight. Give me the cop. Is like is give me the cop. <laughs> it's almost it's like there's there's trouble or fire in the mount on the mountain. But it's just how the role. It's just how it's just how the family is. So in in that situation, the person goes into an, a relationship with someone, and that's how they know how to communicate. And the other person who comes from a reserved um, family or from a reserved home is, has a reserved personality thinks. Oh, you're being rude. You're you're shouting. Well, you know, you're making me uncomfortable. But not knowing that that is the person's normal way of expressing or asking a question or something like that. Okay, so ask these questions. Know these things. I mean, the thing is, when it comes to the mimicking the the patterns of the family, some people can be like that, or they're trying to avoid that. For instance, I'm just going to give an example. A man who grows up in a home where when there's a disagreement, the father and mother always fights. 
he has built up this wall where if he sees his partner shouting or talking to him, it just locks up and he wants to just run away. He's trying to avoid what happened in his past. He doesn't want to replay the situation that happened when he was growing up with his family. So you should understand or know how your partner would handle problems or disagreements before you get into a committed relationship. Quite important. Now, there are a lot more questions I can go on and on. More questions to explore. Uh, questions on your goals, important to ask that. Questions on children. Explore questions on expectations, extended family. I know some people, they don't like each other's family at all. So pretty much explore questions around that. Explore questions on religion, friends, and so on. Don't be afraid or shy or love struck to ask the difficult questions. What you do not know can hurt you later. I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening. Meet you again at another episode of Die True. Finding your truth with Ifemena. Ifemena.